I gave them copies of my questions. And I've already been told as part of question three that like the district wasn't given a choice about their what they were saying. Yeah. It's okay. They were, they're all wrong. Yeah. They're all wrong. Yeah, anticipating is not the most common. Uh, yeah. It's one everybody. You know what? That was stuff that was purchased. People were like, that's the first time.
several nights. Each speaker signed up. We have uh, 16 speakers signed up to speak uh, today, and uh, each speaker has five minutes that they can speak, no yielding of time. And if there are questions asked of the body, we'll note those, and then during the uh, uh, comment period, we'll then ask the appropriate individuals. I'll try to take as many of those questions down as we can and we'll ask them at that time. So with that, uh, we'll go to our first speaker. The five minute uh, time is up on that board behind you. And I know it's kind of a little bit difficult to hear here with all the other noises. So uh, if everyone can kind of listen to the speaker and, and not speak and silence your cell phones. Uh, first up, Emily Farrell. doesn't really affect her in this school's aspect, it, this school has had a big impact on my child. She's my youngest, so like many of you are proposing, I could just walk out the door and say, okay, cool, I'll never be in the school again, right? Wrong. This is a community. This school, and even though, oh Lord, sorry. <sighs> okay. So my child learned independence and responsibility in this school. The ability to walk a block on her own was a big thing for her. If you move this school, you are taking away the rights of the children in this area who will not be able to gain that small independence. My child developed into the person she is today because of the teachers in this school. You see, my child has not been a perfect student. She has been in many fights and arguments, both with students and teachers, and these teachers didn't give up on her. Miss Patrick has taught fought tirelessly to make sure that Kenzie knew she had people on her side no matter the situation. This year we entered into fifth grade, and as I said to Kenzie, make this your best year. She had bumps along the way, but with the help of Ms. Byers and Ms. Veltry, they knew the emotions of Kenzie, and only because this is a small enough school were they able to know her emotions. Were they able to prevent her from having many days of OSS and ISS that she likely would have had in a larger school? While she has a little spice because both of her parents hail from New York, the teachers in the school have taught her how to know her triggers and to remove herself from that situation. This would not likely happen at Johnson Elementary School. The larger the student ratio, the less amount of attention and control someone can have over their environment. The after school programs like Crazy Aids and Extended Day has fostered an engagement into learning that made her feel so smart and creative. My child came home and would say, Mom, I learned this today. With that said, my questions are to you. If you're successful at your plan, ignoring all of the benefits of not merging, will you rearrange the time of school to account for those who are in high school who have responsibilities of getting their elementary school siblings or middle school siblings to school while their parents are already at work? The other day, out of curiosity, I took my child to Mountain Air Middle. So I said, let me drive to RCB and see how long it would take. It took me 16 minutes to get from Mountain Air Middle to RCB. Driving Davison Run Road past the VA to get to RCB. Now, this is not with heavy traffic. So, most of the students and parents leaving from Mountaineer Middle go right when they leave the school. Now, we would be turning left, creating heavier traffic patterns in that area of town. So, adding about 20 minutes for traffic, I'm saying as a parent whose eighth grader doesn't ride a bus and has constantly been bullied because of it, and I would then have to take my middle schooler also by car. That's taken about 30 minutes currently if I drop my daughter off at the corner here and go to Mountaineer Middle to come home, it takes me about 30 minutes. What is the progress here? What are we going to do? I don't think I'd be able to make a trip to the current liberty to drop what would be my fifth grader going into sixth grade in a liberty to RCB to get my now ninth grader there. So my questions for you guys is basically this. You believe that you have a plan for schooling, but what is the transportation logistics of these children to make sure that you are not jeopardizing the safety of them? Because if you put a middle schooler on the bus with a high schooler that my child once experienced, she was bullied. Amen. And then if you're going to take our elementary school kids and put them on a bus with middle schoolers or high schoolers, you're opening them up to a lot of sexual activities and drugs and vaping that they have not been exposed to. I don't think it's very safe for our children at this age to be exposing them to middle schoolers and high schoolers, which would have to happen 
with transportation issues that you currently already have with minimal bus drivers. Amen. That's sister. all I have to say. <laughs> I've been here for 17 years. Um, I'm actually standing up for the whole faculty. We kind of come up with a list of questions, so I don't have a big speech to give. Um, so I'll just go into it. I gave you all a copy of the questions. I may have edited one or two, but um, so hopefully you can answer at the end. The, the first question pertains to our summer program that we have here at the school. Energy Express has been in Northview for 25 years. We um, feed approximately 60 kids a day through kids that are here for the program, the parks program kids, and the, the many volunteers. Our daughter was one of for several years, and then she worked Energy Express. Um, so we are worried if we leave here and go to Mountaineer Middle, um, will Energy Express be welcomed at the new school? And if it is, you know, being located here within Northview, most of our kids walk to that program. The parents walk them, they walk on their own. Would the Board of Ed be um, able to provide assistance? to pick up kids um, from the Salem community and from the Northview community to get them to to get them to that program. So um, a lot of our kids really benefit from that. You know, otherwise sometimes we worry that kids could just be running the streets of Northview and it keeps that from happening and it's a great program that helps them not regress over the summer when they're reading levels. Um, question number two is a follow-up question for Mrs. Stetler. When you came to the school in March, I asked you about the playgrounds. Playgrounds are near and dear to my heart as a preschool teacher. Um, I helped Mr. Skinner write the grant for the playground out back years ago. Up until we had that, we had to walk our kids down to the Northview City Park where we were oftentimes having to check the park for drug paraphernalia or there would be stray animals running around. So the idea of losing our playgrounds, I know they worked really hard for the playground out front. Um, alone, our steam center, who someone else may speak on later. But, um, <laughs> but um, so we, she said that there was in the budget for a playground um, for the school. We are wondering whether there be two playgrounds, one for early childhood, one for the older kids. Will they be fenced in? Because the kids can't use this, like, the same playground because of age restrictions on the equipment. Um, question number three. We are just curious if we would have input on new materials that are purchased for our classrooms. Um, we don't want to waste money. We know a lot of this is but there's a budget, so we don't want things that we're not going to use or don't need. We would like to be able to select those items. Okay. Um, number four, I'm going to actually direct this question to Mr. Tucker. Um, if Salem is successful in securing a vote of no for their school, how would Northview be affected? Will we still be moved to Mountaineer Middle? Will we get to go on our own? Um, so there's some concerns there. And if this consolidation is approved, could we be given two questions on this. If we could be given paid time at the beginning of the new year, um, I know Mr. Hamrick stepped into my room. I know early, ch I, I can speak for early childhood. You know, it's a beast. You know, we've got a lot of stuff. And between my assistant and I, we have 50 years, like 50 years of pre-K. I'm going to have to get a U-Haul to move out just my stuff. Um, so could we have time, maybe an extra day or two paid at the beginning of the year to come in and set up classrooms? And also, um, I think if this happens the year after next, could we be given time at the end of the of next school year to meet as a collaborative staff to develop our teams, like for the strategic planning committee that has to be done that year prior? It would be nice to be able to meet together as a staff. And you know, the studies show when you offer meetings after school, people don't stay. You know, we all have families that we want to get home to. Several of our teachers work other jobs after school and have other commitments, but we'd all like to be there. So if that time could be made available, that would be. Fantastic. And okay. Okay, so this one, I'm unsure. If plans were approved, um, if all the plans are approved for the consolidation and it moves forward, um, we hate to ask to go into a school, you know, to take a look at the building before the people who moved out. You know, it doesn't really seem all that nice to do that. But would there be a time if this is all approved that we could go in and look at the classroom, see what the layouts are? Um, we did hear, but I've since heard that this might not be true, that um, there was already a map of the building that had kind of had designated classrooms, like which grades would go into which classrooms. If that's true, if we could see that, you know, to give us maybe an idea of where we would be within the building, that would be greatly appreciated to make the transition easier. And um, 
And then also we understand this question, I've gone to a lot of meetings, you know, with my husband, and I know a lot of people ask these questions, and we understand that unless, until you know total enrollment numbers, it's really hard for us to know what the faculty will be, like as far as transfers and things like that. Um, but, you know, it's a lot easier for people to make decisions, and if you can let us know as soon as you do, if there's a date that you could tell us, you know, we're going to lose this many teachers, so these people aren't going to be able to go, because these are our lives. You know, we teach at Northview because we love Northview. I've been here for 17 years, and not once have I tried to fit out this building. <laughs> so I would love, I would love in a perfect world to pick our school up, everybody, <laughs> and just put us down. Because I love, I love my kids, I love my families, you know. Being, I didn't want to get emotional, but being here in Northview, I get to see my parents every day. You know, I have three kids that ride a bus. All the rest of my kids, I see their parents on a daily basis. And I get to talk to them, we become friends. You know, Jennifer, Jennifer C, I had her, her oldest son, John Paul, my first year at Northview. Her son, Benjamin, is now a junior. Yeah. My God, a junior at Liberty. Um, she doesn't have to be here. She stays and is a member of our ETA and comes back and does things for our school every year because she loves Northview and she loves the community. Yeah, my five minutes are up, old oh, arm. Anyway, <laughs> 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 so thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> My name is Rosie Winton. I'm a resident of Northview and a mother to a second grader here at Northview Elementary. Um, I've read your impact statement for the closure of the school and all of the supporting data that was contained within. And I implore you not to vote in the affirmative on a report that does not contain accurate data with no supporting evidence for public review. I could speak to, from the heart, but tonight I'm going to speak to the specifics of the questionable data that I found within your report that you're going to vote on next week. On page 24, it states that the closure of this school will have no significant impact on the community. How can that statement be determined? That is grossly incorrect. It is impossible for a school that has existed in a community for 97 years where generations of families have walked to and from school for the closure of that school to not have an effect on the community. I request that the data and statistics that support this statement be provided for public review of its accuracy. At the time of the data assessment found in the appendix of your report from May of 2019, your data utilization for our school was at 59%. On page 13, the current school's utilization rate is 80%. After consolidation, the new elementary school will only be at 72%. As the desirable program capacity is stated at 85, consolidation will not meet this requirement. Why would you close a school that has a decent utilization rate just to decrease that rate in a larger building? As so much of this report speaks to cost and cost savings, there are a number of concerns within that data also. As on page 16, it states that this consolidation action will have no significant increase in transportation costs, yet a number of bus routes are greatly increasing, and all of the students who walk to Northview will need to be transported to Mountaineer. Yet the cost of these additional bus drivers and vehicle maintenance reflecting these additional routes have not been included in your report calculations. It is requested that you provide this data and the costs for public review to show the true cost of this consolidation. On page 14, Mountaineer Elementary would need renovations to include additional restrooms for the youngest students. Construction estimates for these costs have also not been provided in your figures or included in that cost of total consolidation. It is requested that you provide these estimates for public review. As per your SBA Form 134 found in the report appendix, 
where a data assessment of Northview was completed in May of 2019. Most aspects of this school were found to be at or above average. The fact that this is almost a 100-year-old building, it requires regular maintenance and planned upkeep. Without basic care being provided, the building will continue to deteriorate. The fact is that this board has neglected this building. And with the last reported upgrade taking place in 2015, which was for lighting, the last major renovation occurred in the 1990s to this building. With the school improvement summary, the cost reported to fix Northview Elementary is estimated at $6.6 .6 million. As per page 17 of your report, in 2022, your unrestricted general fund had a balance of more than $19 million. There are funds available to repair and maintain this building. Why has this rough estimate cost not been reviewed and updated in this nearly five year time span as you have been planning for this closure and consolidation? How is this figure of a $6.6 .6 million repair determined? How can your report reflect calculations repairing plumbing fixtures at a cost of more than $550,000 when the plumbing repairs themselves will only cost $85,000? These figures do not make sense. I request for the supporting documentation of this rough order of magnitude be available for public review and the school improvement summary be updated to reflect the current state of the economy. In closing, I'll look forward to receiving this requested data that would support the questionable statements I brought to your attention. I appreciate your consideration in voting no to this action and not to confirm any actions until all the facts and figures have been reviewed in detail and verified as accurate. Thank you. Amen. Good afternoon, thank you for allowing me this time. My name is Kimberly McLeod. I am a woman of many hats. I'm a mom, I'm also a county employee, but today I'm here as PTA president. My name is Kimberly, I'm Northview Elementary School PTA president, and I'm gonna kinda of take after what faculty senate did. I just have questions for you in regards to our students and our parents at the school. And these are par parents that have come up to me and asked these questions specifically. At our school, 93% of our students are walkers. Out of those 93%, only five to 15 of those are dropped off via car. You believe that you have solved the transportation issue based on the black book. But what about those IEP meetings? Yes, I understand that IEP meetings can be done via phone, but you also have to take into account when a child is sick. If these parents do not have vehicles, they cannot come pick up their kid. So what does the school do and what do we as parents do if a child or my child is stuck at school with 102 temperature? It's a safety hazard. It is a, a massive spreading event, especially with COVID and flu and RSV, RSV on the rise. Um, what are the actions of the teachers? Is it a reportable incident if a child cannot be picked up in a timely manner? Um, I would love to hear feedback on that. Um, number two is we would also like additional help provided to the teachers and the students if the transition happens. It's normal for a fifth grader to anticipate moving to middle school or a high school, but it is abnormal for a kindergartner, first grade or second grader to move to a new school. It's going to have a lasting impact on their mental health and their developmental um, growth. So we would like to know if y'all would provide additional support for our staff and our students. Also, number three is our backpack program. It is fully supported by local Methodist churches, um, Northview Methodist and Duff Street Methodist. We rely, or our students rely on those. 90 plus kids actually receive these backpacks. It is astounding the amount of bags or backpacks that our students receive. How are we going to be able to supply that same need in a school that has no community around it? It is going to be very difficult for us as a school to help fill that gap to ensure that our kids are being fed. 
Number four, we are also very concerned about the staffing reduction and the staffing uncertainty. With key positions such as the principal, the counselor, and the behavioral specialist, a lot of our students rely on those um, staffers to help them with things such as home life or things within the school that are bothering them. Um, it can be very overwhelming for those kids and we would like to know if there is a way that we know who those people are going to be in advance so that we can assure our kids that the principal is going to be Dr. Veltry or the principal is going to be Salem's principal so that we can prepare them for that transition. In close, this building has 100 years of Northview Pride seeped into its walls. We will be here to support our community, Northview teachers and staff, and our children. We hope that you take everything into consideration when making this life-altering decisions. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. I debated long and hard whether to speak today, and I decided that I should. So I really appreciate this opportunity. First, I want to let you know I'm speaking from two perspectives. The first perspective I'm speaking from is the school administrator. From the school administrator's perspective, you love your school, you love your students, and you love your community. We invest ourselves in them, and we are diligent for years and years to make a positive impact on these students and create student leaders. We work to build community within our school and meet the students where they are to create future citizens. I know the families' names here at the school. I know the students' names. And to be honest, I even know their cars because I'm outside during arrival and dismissal. So it's important for me because I see them every day. I am a part of a small school where I know the names of everyone involved. Being in a small school, I know students' backstories struggle and struggles they face. As an administrator, I also understand the financial aspect, the aspect of enrollment, the aspect of building maintenance, and I also understand the aspect of um, student safety and staff safety. I have researched small community schools versus large schools, and research states that a small school has better positive impacts on students than a larger school. Research also indicates that small community schools provide a stronger opportunity for student success. At the end of the day, as an administrator, all I want is for all of my students to succeed. Therefore, I ask that you reflect on the questions presented to you by the staff and the parents in the community of Northview. They are vital for the transition if it will be made to a larger school in a new environment. As an administrator, I will support my staff and my students and my family wherever they go, and I urge you to think of the questions they have and the concerns diligently before making your vote. Secondly, as a lifelong member of the Northview community, I currently live in Northview and have strong investment in this community. A Northview school has been a staple of the community for over 100 years, and removing, a, removing it will be significant change for the overall dynamics of this community. Northview residents have always found comfort in knowing that there's, they can see the school that their child, their grandchild, or family member has attended. Additionally, community businesses and real estate in this community will be impacted by removing the school. You, when you are a member of the Northview community, you become Northview for life. And no matter what happens or the decision that the board makes, the Northview community will stay strong and to continue to adapt to the changes that are need to be made. Both as an administrator and a Northview community member, I have quickly learned that Northview is the hub, Northview School is the hub for the community and the place that people turn to when they need food, clothing, support, or they just need a face to talk to. We are here and easily for them to access right now. And as I end, I want to leave you with a quote. There is no power for change greater than the community that discovers what they care about. I firmly believe the Northview community and the school are one, and I will stand together with all of them to support what we value the most, our asset, our students. Thank you. 
Attorney Dean. So you know what to do when it comes re-election time. <clears throat> Get them out. Evidently, they don't care about our kids. See that. But <clears throat> anyway, uh, when you, if you got a house and you got asbestos in it, you don't go build a new house. You remove it. If you got a leaky roof, you don't go build a new house. You repair it. If you got a cracked window, you don't go build a new house, you repair it. And as far as the number of students, unless you all got a crystal ball, you know, they're saying Liberty's only got, or burned so many. Who's to say that they're not, maybe some big factory or business come in like <clears throat> the FBI did and bring a lot more people into the community. And then what are you gonna do? You gonna build a whole new school to occupy them? And but the most important thing here is the kids' safety and education. That's number one. Busing the kids, you don't have enough bus drivers, first off, and we all know that. Route 50 is a very dangerous road, and especially the kids from Salem. I don't know, there's probably a lot of people in there can remember the time that the three high school kids from Liberty got killed. <clears throat> They're from out the 98. I was on a school bus come from Gore Junior High, but at Sun Valley at the time. And that was a nightmare. People still scar over that. That road is very, very dangerous. And I had two grandsons come here to Northview. One's in first grade, one's in third grade. My daughters drop them off in the morning, and my wife and I pick them up in the afternoon. And the reason being is they've only got a mile to be on the school bus but they're scared to ride the school bus because they're bully. You got these older kids on there that's nothing but bullies, and it sure ain't gonna get any better now. Instead of a mile, they're gonna be driving, I don't know, however many miles it is to Liberty High School. And uh, anyway, I got a granddaughter that goes to Mountaineer Middle and a grandson that goes to Liberty High. And by consolidating these schools as far as safety, for instance, there's school shootings way too often we see on the news. And you take, if you got a thousand students piled up in one school versus 500, and some idiot decides to break out an AR, you can do a lot of damage in a short time. A lot of damage. <clears throat> and, and I don't think you all are taking into consideration the children, the safety, uh, you've heard people speak. This is the first meeting I've been to. Shame on me. I should have been up on it. But I got other things going on. But anyway, if you really want to know the truth, people, follow the money trail. That's what it's all about. The money trail. You get kickbacks. You give these big uh, uh, bids out there for hundreds of thousands of million dollars. You know, you give it to your friends. You give it to this or that. The money rolls right back. That's what it's all about. Or you guys would listen to what the people have said. But no, you will not listen. And I really think it's a done deal. I think we're wasting our time from what I've heard. But anyway, thank you. God bless you. practice this uh, exercise of democracy. Thank you for showing up. Um, my name is Fred Ware. I teach at Liberty High School, and I'm lucky enough to be married to a Northview Elementary teacher. So, that's my wife there. Okay, now when I say I'm lucky enough, that means I get to do a lot of work around here. Um, so, I have a question about the STEAM Center out front. Um, a few years ago, uh, Kim McLeod here, 
she uh, she put up a lot of money to build that steam center, and uh, I put up a lot of sweat, and my wife put up a lot of sweat, and Mike and Sheila Book, and uh, who else worked on that? Angel, oh, Angel. Angel. the whole yeah, a whole bunch of people worked there. on that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> my question is, would there be any money in county funds to recreate that center if this consolidation takes place? Okay. <laughs> Because that was, that was a donated project with donated money and donated time. And I'd be interested to find out if we could find any funding to help recreate that if this all goes the way that it seems to be going. All right. Uh, my next item is a shameless plug for Liberty because uh, I'm a Liberty teacher and I'd like to echo some of the sentiments that some people have said. Uh, smaller schools have a lot going for them. The lower population densities less pressure, more elbow room, uh, more opportunity to be noticed by teachers and teachers having a chance to recognize and know who these kids are. Uh, I'm worried about going to the bigger schools and not a few teachers that feel that way if they go to a 600 member school. So with that, I'll let that be my final statement here and uh, thank you for your time. So it seems like we've been doing this, what's this, the fourth, fifth meeting, whatever. I just want to talk about the plan, all the inaccuracies in it. Very well spoken about it. Um, and then I just want to talk about maybe these schools are the heart of the community. We, we can't pull around. Clarksburg City Council is doing a wonderful job now in trying to revitalize the school or revitalize the city. A job will bring an adult to the area, but a school is where that family plants roots. Northview doesn't have the attraction to bring those people to say. I was going to go down that street, that and talk about that because that's that's important. They're doing very well for themselves right here. I can't get over. And Ryan, sorry, you, you might be, he might be after this. But Tuesday, he came up with as the faculty senate of legitimate concerns, legitimate questions. They're worried. They don't know what river you guys are putting them on. You're putting them on a river and telling them to build a boat, but they don't know if that boat is going to smooth water or there's a waterfall in front of them. They're just asking questions. But, but Ms. Smith, your response and attitude to him was distasteful. There is no way anybody should be treated how he was. He is always an employee of the board, of the board, and he spoke down to him like, how dare him ask you those questions? They're concerned, they're worried about their future, but you kind of belittled him. That is not right. These people are worried. You, to me, you owe him a heartfelt, sincere, hey, I'm sorry that I did that. My emotions got the best of me, and I should just answer the questions. But that is utterly unprofessional. You guys have done well. Yes, the, the delegation is going to have some heated moments. They're going to ask some questions that's hard. They should be asking hard questions. But there's that no time that you guys should be snapping back at them. That's ridiculous. Especially the teachers. The teachers are fighting for this. They love their students. They want the best for them no matter what. We shouldn't teach, teach or treat any teacher like that. I don't care what the circumstance is. I just hope you guys make the right decision. These schools are great, all of them. You guys have the opportunity to really take Harrison County to the next level. You also have the opportunity to destroy Harrison County. You guys are going to make a decision that will be felt for generations after generations. Do what's right. Put more time, put more effort in it. 
if you guys have had several meetings where you guys call and hey, we need to have a work session. We need to have a work session. We need to talk about some ideas. Where has that ever happened? Has that has those work sessions happened? Just asking. I mean, that's that's a question. Has work sessions happened to where we're they're talking about this? We've had very several meetings where delegation speaks, and even in, with these meetings, the only questions you guys are asking is the questions we're asking you. Where is your own questions that you're asking? I'm sure you guys have stuff that you're wanting to know too. But take your time, do what's right, don't do what's fast, don't do what's easy. The easy things usually aren't the right things. This is a very hard thing to do. Just because it looks good from 500,000 feet doesn't mean it's right. Yeah, population is de decreasing. But if you shut the school down, population will decrease even more because we don't have people now moving to the area because the schools aren't here. Yeah. Think about what you're doing. We want to revitalize Clarksburg. We want to revitalize New York or North Hugh. No, we don't want New York. <laughs> <laughs> but even Salem, but we need these schools. Don't do what other states are doing. Don't eliminate the elementary. If anything, we should be having more and more elementary schools. They are the heart of the community. That is where families get to know each other. That is where families learn how to treat each other. Elementary, it starts at the elementary schools. Thank you. about the community that you're going to affect and all the communities that you're going to affect in these closures. I want to say on record I'm against all the closures. Amen. Amen. Let me talk, let me talk a little bit. I've lived in Norfolk for 73 years. Our community has been through a lot. Two factories have closed. You closed Hartman School. You took away our junior high. Now you want to take away the only thing left in in Northview. The, the one thing that attracts people to move to Northview, well, yeah, I'm going to move there because my children can walk to school. Yeah. Our community is safe as any community in the city of Clarksburg. And we are the biggest community in the city of Clarksburg. You add us, you add Arlington, and you add Glen Falls. The meetings that I've attended, I have not heard, maybe, um, I did attend uh, the WI meeting. Or they are, I did, the one that uh, someone spoke in favor, I would say 99.5% of all the people that have spoken have spoken against this consolidation. So, I also want to, want to bring out to the board, and I discussed this with Mr. Lopez before the meeting, um, I don't know how many buses that come here, let's just say 10, and 20 will come after, after that if this school closes. West Virginia Avenue is a problem with the hillside. If you look right at past where you turn down to head up to Northview, you have two sections that half of the road is closed. If you look at where the laundromat's located and go 150 feet toward Northview School, there's a 50-foot slip starting there. The city of Clarksburg has been monitoring this. I don't know um, how long it may last or how long it may not last. But I know that added weight on a, a street such as that will be a problem. Will it ever slip and a bus go over the hill? God, I hope not. I just want to close in saying, the decline of your community starts with the closure of your school. We don't want that. Bigger is not always better. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, John. I'm
catching up with John. I've been in Northview 60 years, and we both have a way to go. We both have a way to go to reach my dad, who's 96 years old. He'll be speaking next. Um, I didn't see the report that was read earlier about not affecting a community. Anyone with a brain knows that closing a school is going to affect the community. Amen. That's common sense. That's right. And I've been told I don't have a lot of common sense. <laughs> but even I know that. Um, yeah, I was a student here. I was a teacher here. Um, this is my home. As people said, um, I've talked to some uh, realtors. And there's only a couple places in Clarksburg where people live. And when they buy a new house, they don't leave that community. They buy a new house in that community. North Hue is one of those places. So I've lived in three different houses. The house I was born in, the house on Richards Avenue, where I adopted my son, and then the house now across the street. We love our neighborhood. We love our neighborhood school. This is the center of life in North Hue. This is, I believe, the last elementary, public elementary school in a neighborhood in the city of Clarksburg. I don't, as I mentioned at Robert Seabird High School when I spoke, you don't want that to be your legacy. And just because, yeah, we've all been through consolidation. You don't need to say, yeah, we've all been through consolidation. Yes, we have. Has it been effective? Has it been a good thing? Maybe some of it was good, but not always. And especially at the elementary level. These kids need um, protection. And, and by walking to school, or even if their parents walk them to school, um, you can't be a neighborhood school. Yes, there's declining enrollment, but like someone said, um, you take out the neighborhood school, you're going to have more declining enrollment. Right. I, I mean, that only makes sense. So we talk about school choice. We talk about smaller class sizes. I mean, as a teacher, I know I'm up. I'm always preaching about smaller class sizes, smaller class sizes. And at Northview, I usually have 22 to 25 kids. One year, I had a class of 16. It was literally like I died and went to heaven. <laughs> I mean, it was an unbelievable difference. You know? And um, not that we're going to have class, classes like that, but... Um, Having, having a smaller school just where everybody knows everybody. And yeah, if there's consolidation, we all make it work. And we know that kids are resilient. But I have a goddaughter that goes to Nutter Fort, and it's a great school, and there's great teachers, but it's way too big. And you know, she's, she's involved in stuff, she's in the choir. I volunteer to go pick her up because her dad's working and can't pick her up, you know, at 4.15. These kids, if they have choir and after school program, they can walk. They can walk home. Or their parents can walk to get them if they don't have a car. Or their babysitter can come and get them if their parents are working. If they're out of Mountaineer Middle, you're cutting, you're cutting those kids off of programs. I don't see any benefit that would outweigh having a child to be able to go to these after school programs or even a Christmas concert. You know, or, or a school program like that. If they can't walk there, they're not part of it. And these kids in Northview, not that they're any more strapped than any other kids, but sometimes that's all they have to look forward to, is the choir or the band or the Christmas program. I, I had that experience of students that I have when I taught here. You don't realize you're, you're changing a, a, a child's life for the better if you're giving them opportunities in the community. Um, yeah, I live across the street, so I don't want this to become, you know, a hotel for the homeless. Because that's what it will become. Unless the board has other plans for it. Or I know Jerry's here tonight if the city has other plans for it. it. It's just a sad reality. And I don't think we want to do that to our communities and to our students. So, um... I don't think it's a done deal. I don't know. Like I said, I don't have too much common sense, but I, I have faith that you guys um, will do what's right. Um, you know, it seems a little strange. Oops. 
it seems a little strange to me that the new schools were supposed to be like Norwood Elementary, Northview Elementary needs a new school, WI Middle needs a new school. It seems kind of weird that those are all the schools now involved in this consolidation plan. Um, you know, let's, let's spend some money and, and build some new schools. We'd love to have a new school in Northview, but we'd like to have it here in Northview. Thank you. Joby Spanifor. Take the I just want to make sure you people know about school. You know, I've been I've been I've been here so long. I figured you much school I went to, but it was wonderful. I mean, it, it just I, I don't know. It's hard to explain how wonderful it is. And that's why I think we should make sure we have it. I mean, it, it just, like I could say, I just, it's a good, I don't know how to say it. And I, I just think it's wonderful. Because I mean, I've been, you know, been around long, and I've been, all the education I can do, I, I, I try to get involved with stuff and everything else. So let me tell you something. We need, we need our school bad. And that's, and that's And I hope we, I hope we, we get to keep it. Because I've been here, I forget uh, how long now. 96. <laughs> <laughs> now, he, told me, he told me I'm 96 years old, so I guess that's all. Uh, but I mean, it, like I said, I've been here all my life. And it, it's been wonderful. And I don't know why we have to change it or not. We shouldn't have to change it. We just, we just keep it. And keep it going. I mean, it's wonderful. Okay? Yes. And, uh, yeah. Ryan Deans. Good afternoon. My name is Ryan Deans. Uh, most of the people in this room know me, uh, either professionally or personally. Uh, lots of lots of friends in the room uh, today. I am the president of the Harrison County Education Association. Uh, I'm also a former student of Northview Elementary, uh, and an almost lifelong resident of Northview. Uh, I grew up on Richards Avenue. I walked to school every day. Um, and when I went to middle school and had to get on the bus, I hated it. So, and uh, now I live in the shadow of the school right down here on Pride Avenue. Uh, so, uh, Northview Elementary has always been uh, uh, a focal point in my life, I guess. Uh, with my position with HDA, I understand uh, the financial situation that we're experiencing and the decrease in enrollment. However, uh, I think we need to slow down this process, uh, especially in regards to the elementary school. From a strictly professional standpoint, I'm really unnerved by the amount of teachers who will be transferred from these elementary schools. 13, 13 teachers will be pushed into uncertainty. Almost everyone would agree that community schools are better. While there are benefits for larger secondary schools, I don't think that's true for our youngest learners. Smaller classes provide more one-on-one -on -one instruction for each student, which yield better academic results. As a community member, I love this school to stay. I, like almost everyone else in here, in this room, have an emotional connection to this place. In the current timeline, moving six schools with an already stretched maintenance department is going to be a massive feat. If you decide to move the middle of high schools uh, and you're still entertaining the move of the elementary schools, 
uh, let's keep these small schools open as long as we can. And let's explore all of the possibilities and how we can keep our student, our youngest students in these smaller schools. This is a great neighborhood. This is a great school. 10 years ago, when I bought my house, when I moved back, uh, became a Harris County employee and moved into my house, uh, my first realtor, and there's a reason why I had two realtors, uh, my first realtor said, oh, you don't want to move to Northview. It's not, it's not the same neighborhood you grew up in. You don't want to live there. And kept trying to show me houses in Bridgeport. Uh, and it's probably the, the Northview in me. I was stubborn uh, and said, no, I'm going to live in Northview. Uh, that's, that's my neighborhood. That's where I grew up. That's where I want to be. So this is a great school, too. It gave me a great foundation with uh, great teachers like Mr. Spadafore. I know all of you truly have the best interest for our students and family in your heart. Uh, please, please keep this in mind as you go on Tuesday. Thank you. resident 70 years of Norfew. Uh, I'm also a uh, past student in Norfew uh, school also and I'm also a proud parent as many are here today of children that have went through the system here at Norfew then on the board or Mountaineer Middle and then Liberty and uh, I think we all agree we uh, our kids have had a great education uh, they've received a quality education. As a, my kids received a quality education as thousands like them here at Norfolk to move on to higher uh, education, to colleges, vocational training, and other education training, preparing them for successful careers and be community-minded individuals. Norfolk School has been the initial anchor for children of the residents in Norfolk since for over 100 years. I thought it was 1914, but you know, I might have my figures wrong on that. But, uh, as, and this has been a beginning education, educational foundation for thousands of students. This is currently a working historical landmark facility. Like many community schools, Norfolk is just has demonstrated educational advantages in the following ways. And I'd like to add also, you know, a lot of the other schools you're talking about consolidating, add that to that their list of, uh, of benefits. Community schools typically have better attendance by students, higher graduation rates, which we all want, allow students increased participation in sports, extracurricular activities for their confidence building and social skill impact for their life. This improves uh, Northview Community School and other smaller schools, improves student, teacher, and parent pride of the school and county school system overall, improved teacher to student, student ratio, which is very important for a better learning environment, and not only that, retaining good teachers. The more load you put on teachers, the tougher it is uh, for them to be creative for their students and uh, do, do the planning to uh, impact their students as positively as possible. Uh, it increases family involvement, the smaller school, like Northview here, uh, family involvement for the betterment of the learning environment creates a collaborative partnership between parents, teachers, students, school staff, administrators, and community leaders. Community schools allow the advantage of students walking, being dropped off by parents to and from school. A lot of you heard tonight, a lot of people have different circumstances where that is a huge advantage. 
uh, for, for their child. In, in conclusion, and the one, one thing I did not realize till the night, I didn't realize how many, how many kids walk and how little were dropped off, which you heard one of the other ladies mention that. And my kids always walk to school. They would get together with their friends and walk to school and walk back home. That, that builds social skills, whether you believe it or not. That's socially what kids need. In conclusion, community school like more few illustrates the student realizing a better education, which is, after all, what goal of it, the education system we all want, including this board, I'm sure. Here are some negative impacts I, I looked at involving the closing of a community school like Northview. It increases the future possibilities of charter schools that will compete for the funding away from public education dollars that this, this uh, county would receive. This will further erode funding that will create future need for consolidating schools beyond today's pressure you're dealing with. Will create increased deterioration of the largest population center in Clarksburg, which Northview is. Decreased property values. Creates a need of adding bus staffing at a time when you cannot even find a CDL certified driver. The shortage is all across the country. I know myself personally. And more buses needed along with the maintenance facilities add fuel costs, increased liability insurance costs, <laughs> along with additional safety liabilities to students. As somebody mentioned earlier about the, the, the distance traveling. Every additional mile travel adds to accident probabilities. Added bus routes also add a school system carbon footprint. Five, five minutes. If I minutes up, okay. Uh, can I make one more point? Okay. Uh, many states, I just wanted to point this out, many states like California, Maryland, New Mexico, New York, have committed to reverse the trend and seeing that the community schools are needed to improve the education system and have slipped below other education levels. California has committed $30 billion to this endeavor. I have more, but I'm going to stop right there. Hello. I wasn't going to speak because I just spoke at the uh, one for WI, but I've had several messages from people in, in the community. Um, and Councilwoman Wright, she wasn't able to get here on time, so I told her I would speak as well on things that we've kind of talked about. Um, as I mentioned at WI, this vote is different than the other ones. Um, as I was told, six votes. Uh, I think this one from Northview is, I didn't go to Northview, I don't live in Northview, but when you understand the overall um, uh, condition the city's in, you understand how important this neighborhood is to the overall part of the city. This vote doesn't have to be a challenge. It could be an opportunity to help lead the revitalization of Clarksburg um, through the biggest neighborhood that we have. Now, I understand this school may have to be closed. I understand that part. Building a new one here would, do, would be tremendous. Um, I can't speak for the city of Clarksburg, but I, I know we would love to be a part of finding that space. Um, I, if anybody get on Google Maps, there's space. There's 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 possibility to make that happen. Um, so, um, so a lot of other things that people wanted me to say have already kind of been said. Um, some great stats and everything to put out tonight. So I appreciate everybody's work to putting into that. It's very important. Um, so I guess really I'm just kind of pulling on some heartstrings at this point. Uh, Pete Secret said, Clarksburg is in the bottom of the ninth and down several runs. We need your help to help save Clarksburg so we can make a comeback. Um, like I said, the direct path for revitalization is through the youth. We can 
revitalize the youth, the city, it will all work out. Uh, we'll we'll re uh, return to heights that we had before, not all the way up there, but we can really change things. And you guys can do more with this vote for the city of Carsburg than a city council member or city manager can do in eight to 12 years. And that's how important this one vote is. I hope you guys consider this vote different. Um, I went to WI and I understand some of the financial part of it. I understand not all votes are the same. Uh, and in WI, I understand you probably have to do what you guys have to do uh, when it comes to that. But Northview is different. Um, and I know that and I didn't even go here. So I could imagine the people that go here, how they feel about this. So I just hope you guys consider that. And thank you for your time. Good evening. You know, this is, I don't know how many times I've addressed this board now, several times. Uh, but one thing that I keep hearing from parents and I keep hearing from citizens is this is a done deal. And my question to you is why do they even think that? Why do they think that a governmental process isn't playing out in the way that it should? Why do they think that you won't do the proper research? Why do they think that you won't give their opinions the proper consideration? Why do they think that you won't look at the, all of the facts? Why do they think you won't have all the studies done? Why do the citizens of this county think that? I mean, I think I know why. I think it's because we've had numerous delegations over several meetings. And, and you know, most of those questions have went unaddressed. Most of those concerns have went undiscussed. You discuss things in, in board meetings, we talk about the school calendar, but we don't talk about this. We don't have healthy debate on it. There have been some board members that have addressed concerns. And Mr. Tucker, last meeting, I appreciate that. I told you that after the meeting, and I genuinely meant it. But you know, it's not often that this board receives this kind of feedback on anything. We're all guilty of apathy. I mean, no one shows up to the board meetings most of the time. But you've received feedback this time. Teachers don't want it. Citizens don't want it. Maybe there's a few people that you might call power brokers that, that have financial positions in the county that would like to see this for whatever motives they might have. But that's not the general sentiment of the people. So what is it we're really here discussing this evening? We're discussing the death of the community. You That's what you're discussing. You're talking about a, a, a death spiral. Lower population, lower enrollment. Okay, well you take the school out, then you have lower population and lower enrollment. Then further consolidation is needed. Then I ask, how many of you have sit and looked at previous studies in this state? How many of you know what the financial ramifications are of previous consolidation efforts? How many of you know the impacts on those communities? I would encourage you to take a read because it's startling. You know, we have had population decline in the area, and there's been some unwise civic decision. There's been some unwise wise decisions at the county level. But you know what? We haven't died yet, and that enrollment decline in this county is not a complete mirror of that population decline. So my question is, why is the, is the enrollment decline greater? It's because we need to fix other issues in the schools. We need to provide the teachers with the resources they need. We need to make good decisions. We need to make sure that the community is involved and has a say in their school. You know, I have a few questions, if, if they're answered. Ms. Francis, 
you were quoted in the paper, and I'm sorry to startle you. Uh, My name's Mary Francis. Oh, I'm sorry, Mary Francis. I, I, I said miss, I apologize. Uh, you were quoted in the paper discussing asbestos issues in this school, said it's full of asbestos. If it is, how long has the board known about this? What's it contained in? Is it limited to ceiling tiles? Can you reference a report that discusses this asbestos? How many schools in the county do contain asbestos or other types of similar issues? You know, Mr. Riffle talked about the involvement with the city, and, and I think I know the answer to this question. It appears that there has been no involvement or no reach out from the board level. Yes, maybe the board, the city should have reached out to you, but I, I would say when you're making a decision of this ramification, the board should have reached out to the city. What about the city of Salem as well? Is the information contained, and I've asked this question several times in the closure document for these elementary schools, I've asked it the other two, is does that represent the totality of the information that you have to make this decision? They, people have discussed the busing. It's a terrible issue. How are you going to do that? If you don't have a plan now, how can you make a formative decision? You know, people seem frustrated, and I, frankly, I don't, I just don't blame them. They ask you questions, they tell you concerns, and they don't get answers. So I ask that you vote no. I ask that you provide the answers, and at a minimum, before you make a decision, we look at these issues and discuss it. That's all. Thank you. Good question. Good question. Final speaker, Nick Lee. the first graduating class. We're planning a 50-year class reunion this summer. My wife, Kathy, graduated from Liberty in 75. My daughter graduated from WI High School in 1995. My son graduated from RCB in 1997. I have two granddaughters that are seniors this year, one, uh, and they're graduating in a few months. Uh, Catherine Odom at Liberty and Lillian Lane from RCB. The one from RCB is uh, competed at a We the People competition in Charleston, is going to compete, go and compete nationally at Washington, D.C. It's a government thing, a constitution thing. I hope one day she sits up there with you guys, or where you're at now. Two of my older grandchildren graduated from Liberty and they attended grade school and went back here. Uh, two of my youngest granddaughter, Laura Odom, attends here now. She's going to be moving to middle school. I've got two, three little great grandsons. Two of them are here now, Gabe and Landon. Oh, uh, Pal. That's a, that's kind of love it. Uh, and they, they've got a little brother that's going to attend here, hopefully at some point. And I want them all to attend Liberty High School. I have a lot of past, present, and future at these all these schools that we're talking about here. I can't understand how the numbers of students attending each school and the capacity of each high school, middle school has changed in the last 10 years and since the, the 2021 Comprehensive Education Facilities Plan came out. That plan called for building a new Norwood grade school, a new Washington Irving Middle School on RCB campus, and a new Northview grade school. What has changed? The Norwood grade school should have been built. The Norwood parents and voters and students deserve that school. A new WI Middle School should have been built years ago. A new WI Middle School should have been built years ago. The parents and voters and students deserve that school. They still deserve that school. Mountaineer Middle and Northview and Salem and Liberty are all excellent schools, and their parents, voters, and students deserve to continue on. Continue on. The seniors graduating this year my granddaughters will be able to vote in the next election in May. In the following, the following two years, all those that are underclassmen at Liberty and RCB, they can vote also. They're, they're going to be voting for you guys, maybe. 
I want this board to consider the input and views from all parties. I don't know how you can anticipate re-election if the vote for these mergers, consolidations, and closures. All these schools have their own personalities. They deserve to keep them. You're disrupting the lives of 2,681 students and their parents since this and since you're building and their parents since you are building any of the schools that were proposed what are, what are the new proposals from the last meeting at the mountaineer middle school i found out the cefp was a working plan the board of education can you do the work let's build a new wi school let's build a new northview school let's go back and build norwood school we can do that Engineering firm McKinley Architects and Engineering put their name on a working plan. The numbers were poorly put together, but as long as we keep paying the, the invoices, I guess we'll keep getting the same old stuff. This county can support and has supported five high schools since 1991 or 92. I know Mr. Ho, I've stated this before, is still upset that they closed our W High School and that he was not able to move to WI as a coach or administrator at that time. He eventually made it there. That was approximately 33 years ago. RW was the last high school closed. How do you suppose all these teachers feel about this? Probably the same way Mr. Hope felt at that time. To the board, don't forget we elected you to represent all of the voters of Harrison County. Or not your personal agendas, not your special interests. And not to take orders from Charleston. The high school impact statement says we lost 947 students. The middle school and elementary school statement says that we lost 1,248. That's a 301 student difference. I don't know where or how that happened. The impact statement shows RCB has 30 classrooms and holds 999 students, but we know from the other meeting the other night that it's 1,200 students actually. But it says Liberty holds 40, has 40 classrooms and can hold 1,174 students. How's that happen? What are the correct numbers? RCB has 245,000 square foot of space. Just one more second. Liberty has a, a square footage, at least that's in your report, your impact statement, so 1,000, well, I'm sorry, 131,265 square feet. The impact statements of Liberty and RCB and the, and the capacities that are shown in them, there's no possible way that that's correct. Please reconsider. Don't vote for this. Thank you. Those are our speakers in the delegation uh, portion, and it goes down to board member comments on that point. If any board member has a question of uh, the superintendent, uh, so let's start with Mr. Tucker. I have one from Mrs. Whitter. Uh, and the question for Mrs. Ware was if Salem is successful in securing a vote of no on closing their school, how would Northview be affected? will we still be moved to Mountaineer Middle School? Well, first of all, we'll be voting on all six, but individually. So that's where that comes out. That's on, supposedly on Tuesday, it's on me. And I haven't looked at the agenda that came out this evening, okay. But anyway, yes, yeah, on Tuesday. But it's a vote on each individual school. So that's how that next thing I would like to say is uh, thank you all for coming here because there's several of you that came but most of all Mr. Spada for thank you for coming out we certainly appreciate that thank you. I'm not going to get into a lot of stuff but I'd like to Mr. Uh, Lopez someone asked about asbestos so if you would like to address the asbestos, I don't know any particulars about asbestos, but I'm pretty sure you had mentioned that it was in this building, correct? Yeah, correct. We have a lot of, uh, there still is a lot of asbestos in this. A lot of it is above these ceilings. Uh, that doesn't mean it's contained. It's the old ceiling. We have to monitor that. The state monitors it comes in, Board of Risk Management, and uh, the question was about removing it. It's a double-edged sword. When you start removing asbestos, 
you now um, it, it is now in the air. So you have to monitor that, and that can create a health uh, concern as well. So you'd have to almost do that with this building unoccupied, which is, you know, you'd, you'd be doing a lot of work for a long period of time to make that happen. And I think that's probably the reason why, unless that this whole building was completely redone, uh, that it hasn't been done. I, I did hear some of the information in there about what it would cost to, uh, like the plumbing, I think, was brought up and different things like that. That it would be as if they, if, if uh, a company came in, a contractor came in and completely gutted everything in this and redid it. And, uh, and one reason why we probably haven't been able to get all those things, I mean, I, the school is safe, and the main, Harris County Maintenance Department does an exceptional job of making sure that everything is taken care of. You can see it's clean, and it does look very nice. Uh, but for us to get funding to be able to renovate a school like this and, and bring it up to code, we would have to go through the, the West Virginia School Building Authority, and. Um, for them to fund that would be very difficult. Uh, with uh, you, you would have to justify how you were going to go about the funding source at the local match, um, and it would be it would be very difficult to secure funding. And, and again, that is in my experience in, in doing this job, um, in, in working with the engineers, working with the the people from the state department. So. That, does that kind of answer some of the questions? Mr. Lopez, what do you, just for some that may not know, matching funds, what are you talking about there? Well, I think uh, the levy, and I, I don't want to speak uh, wrong, but I think we have somewhere in the neighborhood of two and a half million dollars in the levy for uh, uh, facility upgrades. Where, where are we at? Where, yeah, 4.2 million dollars. So that, so a little over four million, but that's to take care of every school in Harrison County, and and that you know our maintenance budget is pretty, um, you know, and that's what we do each year, and a little bit of that can be used, maybe to uh, out of the levy to to matching funds to go and get funding to build a school or uh, to do a construction projects. A small building too. They will not usually give renovation money for older structures. Right. Very good. That answers that. Um, and just to address, I guess, Mr. Knight, um, I believe Mr. Deems knows that I respect him as a teacher, as a musician, and also as the Harrison County um, HCEA, HCEA president. Um, uh, going back to what my father used to tell me, um, God rest his soul. Um, he said, Mary Francis, there's probably a reason why he would tell me this because when I do speak, I get very passionate when I speak. So when I would perform, he would tell me, Mary Francis, don't talk, just sing. So with that said, I don't have anything else to say. I really don't have a lot to say. I mean, we have been to all the meetings and it's i know where i know where everybody's coming from they're coming from their heart and you know nobody wants to see their school closed i can attest to that when they close roosevelt wilson nobody but we never got to have meetings we never got to have meetings they just closed the school and they told us where we was going and what we had to do if we wanted a job in the future but I started my career back in 1974. I know I look young, but in 1974, uh, my first teaching job was here at Northview Junior High School. And it was a great school then, with the junior high and the great school together, and the staffing that was there then uh, was fantastic. Uh, I got to work, uh, I got my start working with uh, Mr. Pete Perry, got the helping coach, uh, 
it was a privilege uh, to, to all the, of the kids that I met and to see where they go have went on and been successful. And we make a joke, uh, Jimbo Fisher and I are very good friends, and I told Jimbo, I said, I made you what you are today. But he hasn't reciprocated yet. So, uh, but really, it is, it was a nice, nice place for me to start my career, and it took me 35 years to come to the end of it, and I've been several places. And uh, this was just as a great, great place to be. Thank you. Mr. Devano, who's on the phone, do you have any thoughts? Well, I do. I do, yes. Um, I am I'm unique on this board because I know what North View is. I live here and I grew up here and have a family here. And uh, right down the street on uh, 1912, Cold Avenue. And um, it, it, is a, it is an extremely special place. It really is. Uh, I love North View, I've always loved North View. And um, that's all I have to say. And, and I guess to follow up on, on mine, I, I said it the other day, I'm the only one on this board that currently lives in the city of Clarksburg, I believe, in the city limits. I'm going to do a test for and, and to that end, you know, I know, and me, me and Mr. Ware talked about this. We're both government people, and and I mean, I believe Don't in government. Like that, yeah, exactly. <laughs> as far as government, the process, we like the process. Yeah, and cool. and you know, I'm a disciple of Gary Poland, so I can I can tell you that I believe in the process of people coming out to speak. And, and you do become jaded. And, and I'm glad people come out because we don't see the involvement throughout the, uh, the year. So I'm glad when they come here. But I will say when, when people tell me how I'm gonna vote, it surprises me because you know, they know something I don't know. Because I've sat here and listened and taken notes from all of these. And I can tell you that if anyone thinks, you know, I'm just telling you from personal experience, I don't know how anyone's gonna vote. But I can tell you, I can't tell you which one until it happens, but there's not going to be across the board 5-0 votes on these. People are, li we're listening and, and we're making our decisions based on what we feel. And that's why you have a board of five. You don't have one person making this decision. You have five individuals making a decision and we may not agree. You know, at the end of the I don't hold a grudge against anyone when, when we don't agree. That's just the way it is. But I'm going to do what's best for children and the city of Clarksburg. I think I have a, an obligation to represent the city of Clarksburg uh, because I, we, we all represent the whole county, but I live in the city of Clarksburg. I'm a lifelong resident and, and always will be. So uh, with that, I just want people to know that don't get downtrodden and think that this was an exercise in futility coming to any of these meetings because it certainly was not. With that, is there anything else? I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Well. Really quick, you know, we're not supposed to. It doesn't work. I mean, that, that's that's something you need to speak with the legislature. That's way above. I mean, this is the process that we have, and we have to live with. If you think five, if you think five of us are having a good time up here doing this, then you know it's it's not. I'd love for the legislature to do a lot more than what they do to take the responsibility of this, but it falls on the five members. But I think it's much better that it falls on five members than three members or two members or one member. So at least five members. So with that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Mr. Hammer, yes. Is it possible for you all to look at Vaughn to build some of these schools? I mean, that's going to have to be the discussion at the meeting when we, we talk about it. So, as I've said, I've taken sheets worth of notes and we've just we've talked even after the meeting so i mean you've got my you've got my ear i think you've got you know at least most of the year so we'll, we'll certainly you know and i, and I talked talked to you at the last meeting about what that entails so so with it and like i said i appreciate you you coming i appreciate everyone that come because really you know this children's education and, and we should have more participation on a normal basis when it doesn't affect you know, directly affects us. You know, come out to the meeting, we've got a lot of chairs. So, really quick. Yeah. When can we expect answers to the questions that were raised today? That's, and who, will we, who do we need to go to in order to get your answers? And, and that's, 
a superintendent question because, and, and I will reiterate this, and, and I've explained it to it. The way this works, any sort of plan, the consolidation, obviously we're the ones that make the decision. We, you know, we vote it up or down. But with hiring, with firing, with things of this nature, the superintendent brings a recommendation to the board. All we can do is vote that up or down. So if someone thinks that the board sits around and then comes up with a plan to consolidate, that's not how it works. The superintendent has a plan, five plans, two plans. We're the ones that select that. We don't have the ability, much the same if someone's up for a job, the board, if the superintendent brings a recommendation to someone for a job, we can say yes or no. But we can't tell her who to put in that job, and we shouldn't be able to do that. She can bring another name, and she can bring the same name when we vote it up or down. It's just the, the parameters we have to work through as a board. We don't have this unlimited, you know, authority to just, you know, open and close schools. Or that comes, that power is derived from the superintendent through the board who advises, consents, and ratifies anything that the superintendent does. So with that, that's a decision not from the board it, that gets into, you know, for instance, I will say this, you know, I can't answer the, the on the steam or the, you know, the steam center out here, but I would say I'm not going to be on the board past June 30th. So that's a question for the next board. But Mr. Ware, if they don't give you this, I'll come and help you move it myself. Okay. Even if not on the board, because that you did, you did. I don't. Yeah, I don't group think. Of right. Well, we'll dismantle and take it over ourselves. But I can, I can assure you, I guarantee you that even if this happens, I mean, the playgrounds and all that needs to be addressed. And 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 I'll I'll come and speak on that behalf. He's not a board member. And if we need to move, we'll move. So we shouldn't have to. I know Mr. Lopez will make sure we get it done. So. So, is there a motion to adjourn? I make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye.